Hello, my name is Anthony and today I will be going over the proper use and operation of the horizontal bandsaw using a JET 7040 M-4. We use this machine for cutting straight, irregular and curved shaped metals such as large circular tubing and square tubing. Let's go over the anatomy of the bandsaw. Here we have the control panel which houses the power on light, motor push button, emergency reset button and saw head push button. The power on light indicates when power is connected to the machine. The saw motor push button starts the saw motor. The emergency stop button stops the saw motor, and the saw head push button is responsible for moving the saw head downward, putting the blade into contact with the material. Located at the base, on the left hand side of the machine, is the vise handle that is used to hold material in place, and above that is the vise wheel, which is used to replace the saw blade. Located on the top of the saw head is the fluid flow valve and the saw feed rate knob. The fluid flow valve is used to control the amount of coolant fluid that is dispensed onto the saw and the material which prevents overheating of the saw blade and minimizes friction during the cut, just like our cold saws. The saw feed rate knob adjusts the speed at which the saw head will descend into the material being cut. On the right hand side, you will also find the blade motor speed dial which controls the speed at which the blade rotates. And lastly, on the front of the machine are the blade guide supports. These guides assist the operator in adjusting the setting for the cut he or she will be making. These blade guide supports allow you to set the blade guides for varying widths of material. This assures accurate cuts and prolongs the blade's life. The blade guide supports should be set to clear the material being cut. When setting up the machine, set the outer blade guide one inch from the edge of the material being cut and keep the inner blade guide on the yellow line marked here. It is important to make sure the blade supports are adjusted correctly. If they are too wide, the saw will kick and can break. If it's not wide enough, then the blade support will crash into the material, causing damage to the blade and the machine itself. Located at the base on the left hand side of the machine is the saw head handle. This handle swivels the saw head and allows the saw to cut at different angles. 45 degrees is the maximum angle this saw can achieve. Located in the front and rear of the bandsaw are roller conveyor stands. These stands have a weight capacity of 1,000 pounds and should never be exceeded. The conveyors allow long pieces of material to rest on either side of the bandsaw while preparing and making cuts. This will decrease vibration caused by the saw and help make a clean and accurate cut while preventing the material from falling on the ground once the cut is made. Lastly, on the front face of the machine is a handy cutting work aid that will help you determine the correct feed rate and blade speed needed according to the type of material and thickness of that material. This work aid must be reviewed before any cut is made to ensure the machine is properly set. Now that we have covered the different components of the bandsaw and where they are located, let's cut some material. Before we start, let's review the proper PPE, a hard hat, ear protection, safety glasses, and steel-toed shoes are required when operating the bandsaw. Gloves are not necessary when operating the machine, however. They are required when handling freshly cut material due to burrs. Now, let's make sure the work area around the machine is clean and free of any trip hazards. After checking the immediate work area you'll be working, check for excessive buildup of metal debris inside the machine. This buildup will clog the fluid drain and cause the coolant to run onto the floor. This will also prolong the blade life and aid in producing more accurate cuts. To do this, first disconnect the machine from the power outlet. Lock out and tag out the machine, unscrew the saw head cover, and lift it to reveal the saw blade wheel and the interior of the saw head. Then, use a brush to gently remove any built up metal shavings into a bucket like so. You will find a brush located at the base of the saw head. Once this has been done, connect the machine back to its power source and prepare for your cut. Set the material on the roller conveyor and measure the length of your cut. Once you have done this, you can then secure the material in the bandsaw's vise. Remember, when cutting multiple pieces of material, such as two or more large square pieces of tubing, use a large vise clamp to hold the uncut ends on both sides together before performing your cut. Never use the conveyor to move multiple pieces that are not secured into a single bundle. Next, place a roller stand in front of the material if the cut is too small to reach the roller conveyor and a bucket at the end of the material. This will help keep the material stable and ensure a clean cut while also keeping the blade coolant fluid from spilling onto the ground. To make the cutting process easy, we have placed a handy work aid on the front of the saw head cover. 
This work aid will guide you through choosing the correct feed rate and saw speed according to the type of material and thickness of that material you will be cutting. You want to cut stainless steel at a lower saw speed than mild steel due to its thickness, hardness, and durability. If the blade is moving too fast or the feed rate is set too high, it will create excess heat and friction that will damage the saw and break the blade. For example, if we're going to be cutting a 1 half inch mild steel square tube, we would check the work aid and set the feed rate to 3 and the blade speed to 280. Once we have set the material in the vise and have it secured, we will set the blade guide support 1 inch from the edge of the material and the inner blade guide on the yellow line indicated here. Now, make sure the saw head is resting 1 inch above the material being cut. Set the feed rate to zero and start the machine so that the blade is running. Then set the blade speed according to the work aid chart. The blade must be running when adjusting the motor speed. Never start the machine when the blade is resting on the material or at a down position. Once the saw blade speed is set, adjust the blade fluid valve so that it flows across the saw head evenly. If no fluid is present, turn off the saw, lock out the machine and contact maintenance to come and refill the coolant fluid. If the machine has fluid, proceed to set the feed rate. Remember, once you set the feed rate, the saw head will automatically start to descend. Once the blade runs completely through the material, the saw rotation will automatically stop. Note, if you need to lower the blade for cleaning purposes, while the blade is not moving, hold the saw head push button to bring down the saw head. Once the machine has completed the cut, use a rag and cut resistant gloves to retrieve your material making sure little to no fluid lands on the ground. Now, let's make a cut at an angle. While the machine is off, unlock the handle that allows the saw head to swivel. Rotate the saw head until the angle pointer is set to the desired cutting angle. Now, adjust both blade guides approximately two inches this time so that it does not hit the material vise as the saw is cutting. Loosen the vise screw allowing the vise to pivot. Place the material in the saw against the fixed material clamp then firmly tighten the vise up to the material until the loose vise is parallel against the material being cut. Now, tighten the vise screw so that the vise can securely clamp the material. You can then secure the material in the bandsaw's vise. Follow the same steps from before, review the work aid, start the machine, set the feed rate to zero, then set the motor speed according to the work aid, adjust the fluid valves, and set your feed rate. Once the blade has passed through the material, using a rag and cut resistant gloves, collect the cut material. And that's it. This is how you properly use the horizontal bandsaw. I hope you enjoyed this video and now feel confident in operating this machine safely and efficiently. Stay safe and I'll see you in our next video.